Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021-22 Panini Elite Basketball 6 box, half case, pick your team number 13. So it's half case from a fresh case and all cards will ship. There it is, big thanks to this group for buying your team. No fillers in this either, appreciate that. Just sold it out straight up here on 2-22-2022. Ryan with that last spot, Mojo Washington Wizards. So we got six boxes on the back, six boxes right there. So we'll just roll the die. We'll go one, two, three for that six box group and four, five, six for this six box group right here. We're gonna select, we'll select that red die, matches the color of the box. And it's one, so we'll go left side. So this side we will save for next time. So this is break 13, so let's mark this 14. So we know that they're from the same case. Just set those down there for now. Box one, good luck. Logan saying, uh, Logan saying crypto fine loot can visit. I, I didn't, I've not looked. Good. To the, to the moon. Simon looking for a numbered Giannis. That'd be nice. I'm finally glad that uh, I'm finally I'm happy that we're finally diving into this new draft class. I enjoyed I enjoyed our time with uh, Lamelo and Anthony Edwards, among others, in 2020 2021 product, but. I was ready. I'm ready to start seeing some new faces, so I'm glad we're there. Although I'm sure we'll still we'll still dive into some of last year's products, last season's products as well. In fact, I think we got flawless basketball up right now. We can still work on that. I think we're having that delivered to us tomorrow. Jazz rookie still saying that's because the Jazz are drafting too low. Because they're too good, ja <laughs> Logan. Your Jazz are too good. They're not getting good draft spots. It's not like they're getting top five picks. And we got Scotty Barnes. He's having a nice season. 73 out of 999. That's for Cody and the Toronto Raptors. Spellbound, die cut, LeBron James for the Lakers. Let me grab a container for this break here.
There's Anthony Simons to 99. And a redemption. Any guesses on that redemption for bragging rights? Got for the Jazz. Speaking of the Jazz, 539 out of 999, Jared Butler. That'll be for Corey. Got a green die cut. Eight out of seventeen. Dennis Schroeder for the Celtics. Patrick Davis. How many teams do I believe truly tank to get the number one pick? Um, I'm sure. I'm sure, there's got to be at least a few teams, especially if. Especially in like the last like week of the season, if there's like you're like a few games left and you've got a chance at getting better odds for the number one pick, then I'm sure some teams might might feel sort of weaker lineups on a, on, on any given day. There's Jeff Malone for the Washington Bullets that'll go to Ryan and the Wizards. But tanking is a little risky in, in basketball because just just because you have the worst record doesn't mean you're guaranteed the number one overall pick. There's still a, a sort of lottery process to figure out who gets there. So you could you could you could tank and then you know, still not benefit from that. So And now that they increase the number of playoff teams involved too, I think that's got to cut into some of the the tanking narratives as well. All right, we got it's Zion, elite signature Zion Williamson, Pelicans, Minsu. Next box. I know, yeah. It's like Zion doesn't have, exactly Logan. Logan's like like Zion doesn't have the time. Yeah, come on, Zion, sign your card. What are you doing? That redemption should have been in the product, I feel like, Brandon. What's he been doing all year? His hand, his hand isn't hurt, right? He can still sign. It's not like his hand's hurt. What's well, a lower body injury? I mean... They give these guys ample amounts of time to autograph these cards and send them back in for, for products. Isn't it sometimes a contract thing with the redemptions? I guess it I guess it could be. But I don't think they would even put him in the product if if there was a contract issue with him and Panini. Do I consider Zion a bust? I feel like he's always injured. I I generally try not to put a bust tag on players who are injured. Cause that's just like what are you gonna do? 
you know, I consider Bust like the player was highly touted and had plenty of minutes to start and wasn't injured and just didn't do well and just didn't play. You know, and just didn't put up the points or put up the stats. That that's what I think is a bust. It's hard. It's a little harsh to say like, oh, he's injured. He's a bust. That's tough. In my opinion, I mean, I'm sure other people will, will say, hey, you get injured, <laughs> you don't perform, you're a bust. But it's a little harsh. There's Juan Toscano Anderson. Nice. 142 out of 210. For the Warrior, Sean Maddox. Yeah, I saw that. I, I Actually, I only heard about it. I didn't actually read the article. All I know, Oliver, was that J.J. Reddick called out Zion. And saying that he didn't he didn't even reach out to, to C.J. McCollum when he was traded to the Pelicans. This is John Morant to 99. That'll be for Memphis, Minsu. And I think I think Zion, there's Doug McDermott for the Spurs, Impact Impressions autograph. I think uh, Zion's in Portland, too. I think he's at the Nike facility. Uh, Spurs, Jonathan Griffin. Yeah, I, I guess I guess most of his 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 issues are due to are due to weight. Are they due to weight? Probably. The correlation is certainly there. I'm not sure if medically they're actually doing it. it's actually the case, but I'm sure it has something to do with it. It's Franz Wagner to 9.99 Orlando. Cora, well, I'm rooting for Zion. I hope I hope he I hope he figures it out. You know, It'd be good for the hobby. Good for the Pelicans. Yeah, the dunk contest wasn't that great. I don't know. They're going to have to reconfigure the dunk contest or just have the dunk contest be the middle event. Have the three-point contest close out the Saturday night. There's Dennis Schroeder to 17. That'll be for Patrick Davis and the Celtics. And there's Corey Kispert for the Wizards. On-card autograph for Ryan Harold, Last Bot Mojo. That's 82 out of 149. I mean, I feel like all the players had, like, potentially amazing dunks. It just kind of wasn't executed. Very well, the pace of it, all the extra chances, the pace of it was seemed to be uh, a little lackluster. The energy wasn't really that up. The crowd didn't seem to be really fired up. They seemed to be a little quiet. So I don't know. They're going to have to rework that somehow. Yeah, I agree. That's a good point. I think we touched upon that too. It's just like, how much more can we do in the world of dunking? I think they even mentioned it in the broadcast. They were like, you need to do something. You need to kind of up the level on like showmanship or add some more theatrics or a theme or, or, or something like that, you know, to this, to, to this event to make it a little more exciting. And encourage kind of more of that.
Yeah, I feel like the production is a little weird on the dunk contest too, right, Logan? It just seems a little haphazard. Like there's no, there's like no director for it. It's just kind of like, all right, go, I guess. Start dunking. <laughs> And I think the easiest thing for now, without completely overhauling the dunk contest, maybe you just you just switch the order on on Saturday night. I think you um, you know I I think you just switch the order. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, the the members of the, you know, the people in the dunk contest, you know, are also sort of, la I mean, like if you had like John Moran and Anthony Edwards in the dunk contest, I think I think that would have put got a, some more eyeballs on or some more raise a level of excitement there. But some of the key, the key dunkers are, aren't even in the, aren't even in there. There's Josh Christopher to 210. So here's a Giannis letter I, 42 out of 49, the, the first I in Giannis. That'll be for the Bucks. I'm gonna go to Simon. Tyrese Maxey to 99. And Tony Parker. 27 out of 35. Rex is saying, yeah, like with the home run derby, at least you can hit a ball further every time. There's Tony Parker autograph for the Spurs. Jonathan with the Spurs. I don't know. I see, I don't compare the home run derby to the to the dunk contest. The dunk contest is, or the uh, home run derby is more like the, the three point contest. A display of, a display of power in the sense that, you know, while the three point contest is a display of accuracy, you know, there's nothing, the dunk contest, they want you to be creative. You know, there's not too much creativity in a home run or a three pointer. Just the feat itself is exciting. That's what the that's the problem with the dunk contest. It's like the creativity. You know, is 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 the thing. And that's been a little lacking in recent years. I think they should just close out with the three point contest for now and then and then eventually it'll figure out how to reconfigured the dunk contest you know maybe it's just you can have a few down years of the dunk contest there's that your Williams 999 and then maybe naturally it'll grow back to a premier event these things ebb and flow yeah and the other thing they were saying in the broadcast Brandon I remember was that um, a lot of a lot of the commentators a lot of the broadcasters the ex-players are talking about how some of these guys were like more in-game dunkers as opposed to as opposed to maybe just dunking outside of a actual outside of the rhythm of the game. And that's a thing too, just different levels of adrenaline during a game on the run, you know, with a teammate or two running the floor, that could be a little different. There's one out of 22 Karis LeVert die cut for the Pacers, that'll be for Jeremy. Another idea I had was, was I feel like they should they should be. What if you change the dunk contest to an amateur event? You know, what if what if the NBA, what if the NBA, you know, hey, there's JJ Redick Dallas edition we we're just talking about. What if the NBA scouts like some of the best dunkers, uh, best amateur player dunkers out there? You know, have them compete for a prize or something like that. There's J.J. Redick, Dallas Mavericks. Chris with the Mavs. I think that'd be fun to see some of the best unknown talent. 
you know, show off their dunks. You know, maybe there's like some sort of competition ladder that they can go climb to get to the NBA All-Star game. They show off their dunks, you know, maybe maybe compete for compete for like cash prizes. Maybe a 10-day contract with a G League team or something like that. I think that would be kind of cool. After Jordan switched hands in a game, what more can be done to him? What does that mean, Rex? Switch hands in a game? The best dunker in the last 20 years? Uh, that's a that's that's a lot of that's a lot of players. I mean currently John Morant, pretty good dunker. Yeah, Vince Carter, there you go. Especially younger Vince Carter. Maybe in the early part of those last 20 years. Yeah, Vince Carter is probably the right answer. Kobe 8. Maybe not, maybe not KB 24, but KB 8 had some pretty nice dunks. He was a good dunker. Of the young guys today, Anthony Edwards, John Morant, Jalen Green, they've got some they've got some really nice in-game dunks that are pretty amazing. I know what you're talking about. When he's going up for a layup, he goes up with one hand and goes up with the other hand. That was a pretty good move. I mean, there's been some... That's a pretty good move, but there's been some other... There's been a lot of other wow moments beyond that. There's Trey Mann to 210. OKC, Sean Maddock. I mean, that's, there's been a lot of basketball since then, Rex. There's Alvin Robertson. Impact Impressions autograph. For Jonathan and the Spurs. Right, it was the it was the reverse the layup, the hand switch layup. But I mean, unless you're being facetious, Rex, I mean after I mean that there's been a lot of amazing moments in that since that play, that wow moment. It's a 99 Obi Toppin. <laughs> right, that's true. A lot of uh, a lot of time has for for Rex. A lot of time has stopped after 1999. Whether it's music, movies, comedy, sports. Nah, but there's been a lot of there's been a lot of wow moments since then. It's a little unfair to say that the last like, you know. 20 years of basketball didn't have anything wild. I mean, you got you got the ferociousness of Shaquille O'Neal. You know, Kobe Bryant, Vince Carter's dunks. You know, once once more, especially in recent years, guys like this, you know, wowing us with, with long-range three-pointers. And there's Luka Garza. Rookie yearbook autograph for the Pistons. That's for Chad B. Let's see if we can find his teammate, Chad.
Greg was saying earlier, best dunk, Spud Webb best dunk contest. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. When we were discussing, uh, I think yesterday, how to quote unquote fix the dunk contest, was it Mike Tower? Someone had mentioned, you know, the the only people into in the dunk contest can't be taller than like six ten or something like that. Jazzy J, what's up? Yo, how come they never step up and play defense on Steph Curry? Well, I think you have to understand that they are playing defense on Steph Curry, but he's just that good at at separating. And he he moves off the ball so well. And the way his moves are, like he can separate from a defender pretty easily. I mean, you make it seem like it should be easy to defend Steph Curry, but that's what makes him unique. People are trying to defend him. It's not like there's letting, they're letting Steph Curry make these shots. And Steph Curry's not a big dude. They try to body up Steph Curry, too, and he'll still get open and make shots. You know, so... I mean, I, I guess you can man-to-man -man Steph Curry... But he moves, he moves off the ball so well that he can usually lose his defender. You know, if you're still man-to-man, -man, you can still, he can still make a quick move and still separate and his release is so quick he can still make a shot. Yeah, I suppose you could try to zone Steph Curry uh, and get a couple guys on him, but that's also tough too because that, a lot of times that just leaves too, way too much space for Steph Curry. Maybe you limit his off-ball movements that way, but once he has the ball, he can still separate and he's such a fast trigger. It's not easy. That's why he's special. But I guess for, I guess now nowadays it just seems like you're just so used to Steph Curry doing that that you, that he's making it look too easy and it, he almost has normalized what he's done. So like, you know, you don't, kind of don't see like how, how amazing he really is. All right. Next box, Rudy will go bear to 99. Ain't no defense in the NBA these days. Well, if you make that argument, you can you can take that back another 20 years. I feel like everyone says that, but but relative to whatever defense you want to talk about today, you know, there is still defense being played. You know what I mean? So relative to the defense that's being played, it's not like they're just giving Steph Curry open shots. I think you're really underplaying how special Steph Curry is. Like you're really oversimplifying. There's Juan Toscano Anderson for Sean Maddox. Like, hey, just play defense on Steph. Just play defense on him. <laughs> they are. There's Mark Jackson. God bless Jay. I think that's a U, but I always read that as God bless Joe Jaspi. I appreciate that, Mark Jackson. God bless you too. New York Knicks, that's going to go to Shang. Not really any physical defense these days. Well, the rules have made it so there isn't physical defense these days. So... Can't really hand check anymore. You know, a lot, lot of fouls being called for softer, you know, stuff that would have been. But that's that's the day and age that we're in now. 
But to say that there's no defense being played, yeah, I don't think anyone's arguing that the league is softer. We all know that. That's not a, That's not breaking news. <laughs> You know, but in the context of what you have, yeah, there is defense being played on Steph. No one wants to have Steph drop like 10 3 pointers on them in the game. And if you think defenses really do want to do that, you know, then I think you don't know the game. <laughs> these are these are professional basketball players. There's there's still competition and pride on them. No one wants Steph to drop 10 3 pointers on them now. The game is soft now? All right. It's fair. I mean, but... You know, I don't want... I, I'm not I'm not that guy where it's just like... Like, ah! Oh, where, where they romanticize 90s basketball with, like, you know... People forget how, how bad 90s basketball kind of was. A lot of, lot of 85 to 83 kind of games. You know, just a few great teams and not a lot of other good teams. Luca Garza, Detroit, Chad. Oh yeah, Jay watched the real NBA. I feel like old guys say that all the time, right? I'll bet people in the people in the eighties or people who were watching basketball in the nineties were just like, This is garbage. Three point lines. And be like They'd be like, ah, oh, three point lines. You know, back in my basketball day, no three pointers. Everyone claims that their era of ba their generation of basketball is real basketball. Watch, twenty years from now, someone right now, someone growing up right now is gonna be like, is gonna be like, ah, oh, basketball in the twenty twenties. That was hard-nosed basketball. It's too soft now. 2040, 2040 basketball in, in the year 2040, soft. Music was better back in the day, right? You know, guy, guys who grew up in the 60s, man, this 80s music sucks. It's not like it was in the 60s. So, yeah, I agree, Cody. Just because it's different <laughs> doesn't mean it's bad. It's just different eras. What are you going to do? Yeah, 80s basketball is so good, they, they, they tape delayed the finals. I don't know. I don't mind it. It's just a, just a different era. What are you going to do? There's uh, for the Pacers, for Jeremy, TJ McConnell. Everyone agreeing that it was better and more physical, but me? No, I'm, I never said that. I'm just acknowledging the game has changed and I've evolved along with it. It's like, yeah. 
like Danny was saying earlier, no one's disagreeing that the NBA was more physical in the 80s and 90s. But I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying basketball for what it is now. I'm fine with it. Alright, relax, Jay. Alright, there's Zaire Williams. Memphis Grizzlies. Min Su with that one. Kai Jones for the Charlotte Hornets, nine ninety nine, and that's that. That's your break. Quick little recap here. We'll work on that second half of the case tomorrow, and we'll see what else we can find in here. There's Ion, Scotty Barnes at the beginning, right there. There you have it. Spirited debate about the generations of basketball. It's always a fun topic. That was Elite Basketball 6 Box. Pick your team number 13. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye.